Depression and anxiety disorders affect more than 600 million people around the world. You can't tell how someone feels just by looking at them or what they share online. Mind Matters in Minutes. What is mental health? The difference in the quality of medical care received by people with mental illness is one of the reasons why they live shorter lives than people without mental illness. I was surprised to see how many people in my last video wanted me to cover the topic of mental health, but hello. I've been resistant to the idea of making this video because of my emotion faces. I'm not very emotional at all, but I definitely do suffer from anxiety and insecurity. And if you do suffer from either of those, I have some tips. First off, understand that you are not alone. It's like my good friend Tim Ferriss once said, and by good friend, I mean I've never met him before and I wish we were best friends. And he said, if you are insecure, guess what? The rest of the world is too. Do not overestimate the competition and underestimate yourself. You are better than you think. Insecurity is just a lack of confidence which stems from comparison. After all, how would you know you're not living up to your full potential if others didn't show you what your full potential could be? Community is a huge factor to confidence, so understand with insecurity and anxiety, you have a huge community. Tip number two is lessen comparison, AKA do what you can to lessen comparison. Now my biggest tip here would be just to limit social media intake, even though I love social media, but it's super hard not to get caught up in the facade of living lavishly that other people put on. So out of sight, out of mind. Number three is to be active, which on days like this, pretty difficult. Staying active or exercising already sets you apart. If you find a troll or a hater who is also good at the thing that they are critiquing, I'll buy you a car. My gosh, I'm going for it. Oh, shit. It's fully raining now, sweet. I see shelter. If you like skateboarding or playing basketball, go skateboard or play basketball. Being active prevents self-pity. All right, I'm just treading forward. But number four is be practical about your limitations like what you're capable of filming on a rainy day. Now when it comes to working hard and building and all that stuff that I love to do so much, I'm not really sure where my limitations are and that's exciting, but when it comes to social situations whatsoever, I have about a three hour limit before I completely cave into myself. So I actually set an alarm in those social situations and once that alarm goes off, I'm out of there, no question. But be practical, you don't owe anyone your time. Study how you feel and set boundaries. Leads me to number five, which is something that Derek Sivers says, hell no or yes. I tried, I tried my best, I give up, I'm going home. If a project comes along that he's not super enthusiastic about, he says no. He has to be either extremely excited or he will say no. This will set you up to be able to say yes when you do have a project that comes along that is very exciting. <sighs> Can we just enjoy this moment for a second? No. Let's film. Number six is taking tiny steps to get to your goal. And I mean such microscopic steps that if you feel any slight anxiety whatsoever, just go a step below. For example, if I wanted to be a public speaker, making these videos helps or writing something out, doing a presentation in front of my parents or some close friends. You can do these small steps that seem like fun challenges rather than anxiety inducing accomplishments. Go that route. The truth is a lot of our anxiety stems from trying to be a part of the culture that we're taught is correct. Basically, we allow the world to tell us how to feel, think, and compete with their advertisements so that they can feel, think, and compete with each other. Which does lead me to my final tip, and this is definitely the most controversial one, but I like to tell myself that nothing matters. It allows me to sit back and realize in this existence that there's no way that you actually have to be. If you want to achieve a certain goal that people have told you that you think that you want, then I could see you trying to be a certain way to get that goal. But in reality, none of that matters. All of this is relative. Existence is a tiny, 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 tiny blip in all the spectrum of time. Time and existence really doesn't care about you. So in this existence, you shouldn't care what other tiny blips of time think about you. Now, anxiety and insecurity are my struggles with mental health, and I know that literally everyone deals with it. Like, 
not nobody's excluded knowing that alone really does make me feel better and then also just looking at it practically and understanding that you have to chip away at it the way that you are today is a result from the nurture and traumas that you had to deal with and every single person on this planet has to deal with issues that nobody else can understand at least not fully understand so it also allows you to be empathetic to other people's struggles before i was 11 i had these pretty severe panic attacks that carried with me forever i so terrified of falling into that state of mind again where i would start hallucinating sometimes because I was so trapped. The fact that I don't deal with that today is already such a win that I think being positive about the situations of improvement is what carried me out of being that trapped. Having that one win alone has proven to me that I can conquer any of it. That every little anxious moment of going to some New York event nowadays doesn't cause me any anxiety and it's actually fun hanging out with my friends. But when I first moved to New York, it was hard. It was very hard. Understand that people out there can be supportive. And you also have yourself. You can fight it. You can chip away at it. Slowly, but surely. Don't call me Shirley, penis head. I hope this video did justice because a lot of people did ask for it. And if you do want to hear more, I can't explain. Didn't want to get too personal about your boy's childhood and what kind of emerged and why I am the way that I am. But all I know is that today, no matter what happened in the past, is a day where I can work at conquering my anxiety and insecurities. And if you saw in the thumbnail, this new series is called The Creative Dojo. It's where I give tips and tricks on how to explore and expand your creativity and hopefully make some money doing it. It's always the goal, to monetize your art so that you can do what you want to do all the time. That's an exciting life. I also have a skate series that will be premiering very soon, Skate NYC. And then you've probably already seen my other one, Progress Daily, so these three series are rolling out right now. I hope you enjoy them. Let me know down below, like this video, all that, you know, jazz. Love you so much, progress daily, and keep killing it.